Okay, so today's video is about something I built when I was a teenager and I used to fix television sets because what I discovered was I could get old television sets that people were discarding and these were typically sets that were 20 or 25 years old and were tube sets people would be discarding them to get those brand new newfangled transistor ones and I could get the old ones and sell them and what I found is I could sell color TV sets that I had fixed for generally about a hundred bucks which was a fair amount of money at the time but there were also a lot of black and white sets and this is part of the guts from an old black and white set and it really is part because on that old TV set, in fact, this piece of metal extended around and up and over and down on this side. And what I did is I cut the metal here and I cut the metal here, leaving just this section, which if you are of my age or probably even a bit older you might recognize as the high voltage section of a vintage tv set and what i'm going to do is open it up a bit so you can see inside and this is what's known as the flyback converter and it's the part that makes the high voltage that runs the picture tube. And for a black and white set, this device will typically produce somewhere around 16, 18, 20 kilovolts DC or so. For a color set, what you would end up with is probably 25, 30, 35 kilovolts. So this is a relatively low voltage. The way this works is, we have a high voltage transformer known as the flyback and it's called the flyback because it is also the device that provides the high pulsed voltage needed to move the electron beam from the right of your screen to the left when it's scanning horizontal lines so that's where flyback comes from but for our purposes it's really just a switching power supply the output of this transformer is over here and it is the high voltage output at about 20 kilovolts or so and it feeds into this tube which is a diode and the output of the diode goes around the back and up and out over here and this is where we're going to get about 20 kilovolts DC for our experiments today. The tube like any tube has a heater heating the cathode and the heater for this tube is rated at one volt and it's supplied by this wire over here that does a single loop around the core of our transformer so what that means is one loop around the core is equivalent to one volt so to get 18 kilovolts over here we have 18,000 loops in the high voltage winding and you'll notice the outer part of the winding is sort of covered in some sort of goop and that's to prevent corona discharge from destroying the outer parts of the coil and one of the problems is the goop tends to crack over time and these transformers fail luckily this one is still working quite nicely anyway we have a bunch of other windings and most notably one of them is attached to the top of this tube and this is the high voltage driver tube that is going to provide power to the system it essentially switches current on and off through the coil to produce a high voltage spike that's probably in the order of a couple of thousand volts or so which is then up converted through the transformer to our 20,000 volts we have another tube over here called the damper and it was originally introduced to help linearize the scanning from left to right on the tube but they later figured out that they could use this 
to in fact become part of a power supply, a early switching power supply, and create something like 5,000 volts or so, depending on the picture tube, to focus it. So that's sort of the high power, high voltage mechanism. And then there's one other part, and that is this little tube over here, right there. And that is the horizontal oscillator that drives the whole thing. And in fact, I had a problem with this tube when I tried to get this going earlier, and that is the thing would not oscillate. And it took me a while to figure it out. But what had happened was the pins at the bottom of the tube had become slightly oxidized and they weren't making good contacts with the tube socket. And interestingly, that's actually not uncommon with a device that, this, that is as old as this one. Anyway, it all works rather nicely. So what we should do is in fact power it up and do some high voltage experiments. Now the thing to do is let's see if we can just look at some plain old corona discharge. So the first thing I'm going to do is of course just make sure that there's no charge on that because I don't want to zap myself and we'll get this out of the way. And what I've done, and I'm hoping you can see it here, is strip some stranded wire. So I have some very fine wire and I'm just going to wind it around here. And that's going to be our Corona discharge wire. So now what we should do is turn it on and see what happens. Takes a minute for the tubes to heat up. Takes even longer because I don't have it plugged in. Now the tubes are heating up. I can see them get nice and orange. Can you hear that? Now, can we see any corona discharge? We may have to wait till it's completely dark. So I pointed the very fine copper wire towards the metal plate. What I'll do now is dim the lights and turn it on. And let's try again to see if we can see the corona discharge. Now with corona discharge, what's actually happening is the air molecules right near the tip of the electrode are being positively charged. In other words, the electrons are being stripped away. And as soon as that happens, because the molecules are positively charged and because the electrode is positively charged, the molecules are repelled and shoot off away from the electrode. And as you know, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. And so what we can do is actually make a little corona discharge motor. And what I'm going to do is make it using a piece of copper wire and a sewing pin. And the whole purpose of the sewing pin is really just to provide a nice low resistance axle for our engine to swivel on. So if I hold it like this, it can swivel nicely, but it's not actually going to turn when we charge it up until we do this, which is We'll put a little bend on the end of this electrode and we'll put a bend in the end of this electrode like that. And if you imagine that this is now charged to 20 kilovolts, we're going to have air molecules spewing off in this direction and air molecules spewing off in this direction 
and that will in turn push our copper wire so that it moves in a circle. So let's try it. And there it goes. Isn't that cool? And hopefully you can even hear it. Now you don't find that sort of a motor very often. In fact, probably the only place you'd ever see it is in a physics class. But it is kind of neat to know that there is a really weird type of electrical motor that most people have probably never even heard of. So one other thing we can do here is make a nice little Jacob's Ladder. So I'm just going to try and get this piece of copper as straight as I possibly can. And I'm going to use this hole here to get my other piece of copper somewhere near the live piece, like that. And we'll see how well we can get a Jacob's Ladder to work. you might be wondering why I have this oscilloscope set up and it's because when I got this out and got it going I found it was kind of flaky and what it was was this little tube here was not making very good contacts with the socket it was in and that's not untypical for a very old piece of tube electronics so I was doing some troubleshooting and eventually I attached the scope to the grid electrode of the high voltage driver tube so I could see what was happening. And I've just left it on there now because it's a good way of making sure that our 15 kilohertz oscillator properly starts up. So we'll actually do that so you can see it happening. So I've just turned the power on and the tubes are beginning to heat up. And there you can see the waveform that gets applied to the grid of the high voltage tube. And sure enough, the thing started up properly and is producing high voltage. One neat thing we can do is use some aluminum foil and make a little electroscope to look at the charge on our high voltage generator. And to do that, all we need to do is cut a couple of maybe half inch strips off a piece of aluminum foil from the kitchen. And what we'd like to do is put the strips together like that and we're going to use our multimeter to make a little hole in the one end and now we will put a piece of wire on the high voltage generator to hold our electroscope leafs. So I have this piece of thin copper wire and I'm just going to twist it around our high voltage cable and straighten it out so it sticks straight up and then we'll bend it over like this and put a little kink in it maybe and now what we'll do is hang our electroscope leaves on it like that. And now that we've done that, we should see if the electroscope works. And to do that, I'm going to turn on 
the power. That was the isolation transformer. And now I'll turn on the variac. And there, the electroscope worked so well it actually blew one of the leaves off. So I'm going to turn it off and replace the leaf. Let's try that again. I've fixed the electroscope. I've adjusted the position of the copper wire so you can see it a bit better. And now we'll turn on the power. And the electroscope leaves move apart, just like they would if we used a more traditional static electricity generator, which produces the same voltage. And if I turn off the power, the leaves actually stay apart. And that's because there is charge stored on this whole assembly. So what I'm going to do is use the screwdriver attached to the high voltage device chassis to discharge the system. And there we go. The electroscope leaves came together as we would have hoped. So a very nice demonstration of like charges repel.